Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. Content warnings can be found in the show notes. We talk at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now... Let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. The Coterie discussed the night of the rave. Wynn told everyone about Zacharias Slain and his objective to retrieve pages of the Ur Codex. Neil shared information from his interaction with Renwick that Marcus Vitel was the traitor to the domain and that he had kidnapped Fester. At sunset the next night, the quarry sped across town towards the confrontation, and hopefully, a rescue. The group of you make your trip. As you get to the location, there's a few things that are obvious to even a casual observer. One is that despite this being a very, uh, very clean, very well put together section of the city, there is this shitty black Honda Civic that looks old and tired parked outside across the street. And even as you pull up in your car, you can hear the loud, obnoxious music coming from inside of that car. There are mortals that seem to be milling around the area, minding their business, by and large keeping an eye on the house. And then when you return your attention back to the car, inside, you recognize the members of the Steak and Bake Pack, keeping an eye on the situation. Miles, put your phone on silent. Has been. Should I too? Everyone probably should because, but I suspect. Yeah, thank you, Wen. Yeah, no, I'm guessing Miles is going to get texts from those jackasses updating him that people are going into the house. Well, if we do this right, they won't see. Yeah. Britta flips her phone and just double checks that it's on silent. Johnny will also just turn his phone off. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's better. Okay. Park around the corner. And then we'll get out and walk. I can't hide the van. Johnny parks a safe distance away from the location so that the uh, escalates well out of sight. Lex, out of curiosity, what do the Shadowlands and the spiritual worlds look like here? There is a maelstrom that is rending this place in the underworld. Uh, however, beyond that, nothing seems out of the ordinary. Wynne kind of, like, squeezes her eyes shut for a minute and just tries to unsee things. You okay, Wen? Yeah. Just storms here in the Shadowlands, and I can't help but worry. Understandable. But for all intents and purposes, otherwise, the area looks fairly normal. Are we good to keep whispering in the shroud? Once we get close, it's better if you don't. Okay. You can, but it it risks drawing attention unless you're practiced at it. Renwick knows to meet us here? You should. I look around for to see... I mean, it's Renwick. He could be easily hiding like in the fucking sewer grate and I wouldn't even know, but... You do not yet see any signs of Renwick. <sighs> you should, but I, I don't know if he's here or not. And if he's doing his job, I, 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 I wouldn't know unless I took enough time to, to look. So. Are you leading us in? Yeah, all, although I can't. I can walk through the doors. I can look uh, to see if anything's on the other side. But I'm going to need you guys to open them. Okay. I can take point on that since, Neil, you taught me how to hide myself anyway. You should still be uh, protected. Okay. By the shroud, by the by the cloak. Uh, but 
um, you might have to pick the locks kind of deal this time. All right. And Same deal. Let's, yeah. Everybody ready? Mm-hmm. As ready as I'm going to be. And Lex, I will use Obfuscate 5, uh, Cloak the Gathering, to make us all disappear. I imagine once we disembark from the vehicle. Yes, once we're outside. Okay. Or nearly doesn't take a blood, but to extend it to all of you, it does. I believe. The group of you experience a sensation akin to the world simply forgetting your presence. Anyone that is looking your way very suddenly looks the other way, not minding your existence at all. Okay. This way. Let's go. He's under the first floor. By, in case we get separated, near the, near the mantle, near the fireplace. As they start to approach, Britta will heighten her vision and her hearing to keep a lookout. Neil does the same. As we walk past, Britta will peek at the shitty black Honda Civic and the occupants inside. Just curious what their deal is actually is if they're like holding a phone as if they might actually be trying to do reconnaissance or what (laughs) looks like they're just talking they don't really seem like the type that are to be disciplined enough to be obviously doing any one thing except maybe smoking that would, they would be doing that along with something else even then. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and if i recall correctly they're a sabat pack right yeah yeah so what are you guys uh doing next well we need to get inside neil is going to lead the invisible coterie around i know where he is in there but i don't super know like the layout of this place i'm gonna look for like so like a side entrance a door that we could go in so we're not just standing on the front step trying to pick our way in yeah there's side entries yeah is there a basement access uh not direct no okay and then once we get to one that looks like it'll take us reasonably directly to I mean, it's by the fireplace, so you can kind of track where that would be based on the chimney, probably in the center of the house. Yeah. The one that looks like it might, in this style of home, give us the most direct access to there. Not um, any of them very well, but you, you find it sort that. And I'm just going to hold up a finger to everybody in a, like, wait one second motion, and then, like, poke my head through the door. As you go to poke your head through the door, can I get a willpower roll? Difficulty eight. I currently have 14 willpower. Remember that you have an extra dice for tactics. Right. Does this count as an effect that is coming from Marcus Vitale? That is way too vague a question. Well, I gain bonus defensive dice against Marcus Vitale, specifically. This is not an action he's taking okay, against Okay, that is my question. That is six successes. Okay. Uh, that is not enough. You... Jesus Christ. Tens don't blow on willpower, do they? No, you need a spec. Which you can't get for will. No, <laughs> which is which yeah, your yeah, no, yeah, you're right. That's too bad. No, it's, I just had a lot of tens. Yeah, I rolled like four tens. You take no damage, but you find yourself repelled by the presence of a ward. Neil goes to like literally phase through the wall uh, to look inside, and then just stops and jerks backwards. He Jim. looks frustrated and looks at the four of you and just goes very like quietly it's warded we can see him right <laughs> not just the people can, with all specs yeah you can see we him. can see each other okay can win kind of like look at the house and see if she can spot like any like occult signs that could be contributing to a ward of some sort not a thing out of the ordinary outside okay i don't is it just the door it's probably I, I don't know. It might be. It, it depends on how we put it. If it's a circle around the house, then then it's the whole property. But if you just warded the door, then it's the door. I, I don't know. I can try a wall. I like lean around where the boundaries of the door are and kind of stick a hand. Roll against the ward at diff nine. Yeah. With a bunch of ones. Two successes. You do not pierce the ward. It causes a stinging sensation, and uh, you are hit with two levels of bashing damage. You may roll soak. Wards bypass armor, right? They do. Yeah. I will soak both, shockingly. You're good. Mm-hmm. Proud of you, buddy. Hell yeah. Neil shakes his head. No, I, I can't. It it looks seems like it's the property. So do we need to call him out? If the goal is fester, there's no point in calling Vital out. I don't know how to get through it. I'm not a... I don't know how to 
unweave the ward. Or perhaps I should knock on the door and see if he'll just let us in. Can we take this conversation a little further back from the house? Yeah, let's do that. Which one? You were posed two things. Let's move a little bit away and keep talking. This is a wildly strong ward. We will uh, I'll lead the way. We'll follow you. Do you get a sense of like what paradigm it's following? What? What flavor of blood magic is it? Um, it's a ward. I don't know. Okay. I'm not a- an expert. I know how to do wards, but that doesn't mean I can undo them. I, you know, I don't know. Wards are pretty basic principles of thaumaturgy. So, I feel stupid right now, but I'm kind of at a loss. You can't just undo it? Magic is, is once magic is in play, it's basically impossible to, to make it un-in play. Oh, so that guy really was saying that it was an uncommon What guy? Thing. What are you talking about? D- d- doesn't matter. Right. You, once once a ward is up, you, I don't know of a way to get rid of it. Okay, so let's look for a space on the house that wouldn't be warded. I couldn't phase through a blank section of wall, so it looks like it's the whole property. Would you be able to see it? Like, is it in the astral realm? If I step into the astral realm, all of you are going to be visible pretty quick. What if we go through the sewer? I don't. Most sewer access to a house is narrow pipes. Here's a better question. When you say a ward, he like literally put down a, a circle of salt or something. What's the comp- how does how does this happen? It depends. There's, there's nothing outside to indicate. If I was him, I would have done it on the inside. Well, he tries to be pretty buddy buddy with Miles, even if it's fake. Maybe we can use that. The problem is, if Fester's inside, we I don't know how to get in. So so. Miles knocks on the door. Let's regroup. We need a little bit more reconnaissance. Let's get back to the van. Give it a shot to see if you can see anything from the astral realm. If that gives you a clearer picture. I mean... We haven't lost much time at this point, And we can't keep just trying to probe the defenses. If you can get a better sense from the astral realm, then go for it. No, every every time I'm probing the defenses, it hurts. Can you see them at all? getting harder. So you can't see them? See what? Whatever magic defense. The war- no, I don't... I don't know how to. I can't like just see magic like that. Even in out of body. The the astral the astral realm doesn't show magic. It's not the magic realm. It's it, it's the realm of. It was my dumb question. Okay, so uh, we can move past it. I mean, I can look, but I could you know if if the roof isn't awarded, but if the whole property is, the circle sort of extends, and and some transcend realms. Neil, piss or get don't. off the pot. Either look or don't, and we find another option. What? But you're talking yourself into an action. Question. Yeah. If someone is able to open this door, would that break the ward or would it still be If the ward was on the doors, yes, but if the ward is a circle, if the if the house is in a circle, no. So I'm I'm guessing if someone were to enter, would that break the ward or would that If they were let through, they would be let through. But the ward would be intact. The ward would be intact. Gotcha. Neil is clearly getting agitated, like being this close to Fester and being completely impotent once again. Lex, I'm going to look at the house in sort of like a, a frustrated glare. Uh, and I'm actually going to use Eyes of Chaos to see if there's any, you know, I don't really get to pick what it tells me, but looking for faults, weaknesses, chaotic, like a the universe giving me an arrow. So just, But I'm going to just look for answers in the esoteric because neil's frustrated and angry and out of his depth go ahead and roll seven successes just wait you see the house the paint the grass the trees everything decaying at various rates but ultimately you know this place will die the sun will expand and consume it the sun itself will die and eventually the universe will simply burn out and the ward won't matter have a little patience. <laughs> Very <It's> nihilism. <laughs> so when you uh, botch Eyes of Chaos, you get lost in what you're looking at. And while I did not botch, I think I'm just going to stare at the house for a little bit. Good luck, guys. <laughs> you wait a little and the door opens. And opening the door is a gentleman that you recognize as Marcus Vitale. Instinctually, Britta goes still, even though she's covered in the shroud. And he is wearing a bathrobe. He is ridiculously handsome to the point of 
probably not someone that can be around the mortal populace because of how unusually attractive he is. And this man, who is clearly vicissituted to have an appearance six, smiles at you. A perfect winning smile. Why are you on my grass? Who is it, does it seem that he's looking at? He is looking directly at Neil, who has interacted with his environment and broken his obfuscate. Yes. So does that mean it broke for all of us? Yes. He just forgot. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man, my friend's in there and I'm panicking. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. I forgot too. If that um, helps. <laughs> I didn't know it broke though. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, I expected to just be able to walk through the wall, which is probably dumb of me. I just didn't expect him to have fucking thaumaturgy. <laughs> I see you don't quite have an answer ready, and he just takes a few steps back. I um was looking for someone in my yard. There's um. Your Grace, is about... there some custom of your domain that I'm unfamiliar with? Yes, we believe you have Fester in your house, and we'd like him. Oh. For that matter, I heard a dirty little secret that you're not a fucking ventrue. He looks at you, and he smiles, and all of a sudden you don't believe that at all. You're pretty sure he's a ventrue. And speak up and explain to the rest of the party that he's definitely a ventrue. As his unique obfuscate sex specifically says, everyone thinks I'm a ventrue when I use it. <laughs> Straight up on the sheet. <laughs> oh my god. But upon seeing you here on the front step, I, you're obviously a Ventrue. How embarrassing for the rumor mongers. Yeah. Johnny kind of blinks a little bit, like, not really sure what just happened to him. Oh, why don't the group of you wait here a moment and I will fetch your friend? And he shuts the door. What do you guys do? I'm going through the sewer and I'm going to punch my way up into the house. The circle. We don't know where the circle ends, Neil. I'm going to go find out. If you want to come save Fester, come with me. Should I summon him? Which one? I don't know if that would work. No, fuck this. I'm going to go back out to the... uh... Guys, we are straying vastly from the goal here. The plan is broken. Continue on. We can always just burn him out. Fester's in there. Yeah. In a cage. Fester will die. I'm pretty sure the fire will break the ward. No. No? No. I don't think so. If there's no wall left? It, it's a mystic ward. The walls meant nothing to me. It was the ward that kept me out. Wynn finds a sewer grate. Wynn heads over looking for a sewer grate. Or a manhole cover. Yeah, it, it's a bit of a distance. This is very, like, a ritzy space, so there's not really, like, a ton of obvious, like, city stuff like that. While you're looking around, a car speeds out of the garage and, sort of, and takes off. Is it a nice car? It is a very nice car and makes a very, like, loud sports car noises as it goes. Can I see who's in it? The windows are very tinted, my friend. Britta does not wait to look who's in it. She looks at Miles and repeats the same facial expression she had when she said, should I summon him? It's not going to work. Let's go. How close does the car get to me? Not at all. This is a very, very large property and somewhere like, you know, 80 feet off in that direction, car peels out and goes. I know they're is so tinted, but... way <laughs> no, bro, I could use tinted. leaps yeah. and bounds to, l- to land on the car. Give me a Dex Athletics difficulty. Should we get into initiative? Uh, I think so. <laughs> okay. This car is rapidly accelerating uh, at the end of the round. If no one's on that car, keeping up with them or chasing him in some efficient way, mm-hmm. he's gone. For now, he holds his action. We go to 17, Britta. Britta will quick draw her gun and attempt to shoot out a tire. Go for it. Uh, Difficulty on this shot is nine. Eight successes to quick draw. (laughs) Succeed. (laughs) For your notes, that does mean a plus three to initiative. Okay. And then difficulty, you said nine? Difficulty nine. Two successes. The round hits the tire. Uh, You find the uh, durability of the vehicle somehow supernaturally enhanced. Three successes. Okay. Uh, The tire's hit does not break. Britta, instinctively almost, pulls out the assault rifle and takes aim. She makes contact, but it's not enough. I believe that takes us to Johnny. 
Johnny will attempt to channel his uh, celerity through his legs and make a leap and bound to land on the vehicle. Actually, I think leaps and bounds actually caps the difficulty I can give you for this <laughs> at four. <laughs> okay. So dex plus uh, athletics? Yeah, it says, the, the combo basically says, if it's really, really, really hard, they have to roll in a step four. <laughs> <laughs> Seven successes? With seven successes, you leap onto the vehicle. It is this chromed out, overly pretty Porsche, tiny little car inside the windshield. You see nothing but darkness. As a Sabat survivor, do I recognize that darkness? Yes. It is not merely an absence of light. When you do that, he will act. I will say, uh, Johnny... You will notice, though the sounds are muffled, there's some sort of, like, conversation or something happening in the car. Okay. Johnny, you are telekinetically grabbed, shoved in front of the car, moved by his whim, and then run over. He runs you over. The little Porsche makes a horrible crunching noise as it grinds against you. Can we make some kind of contested roll to see if I can stand my ground against the Porsche? Can you grapple the car? Uh, you are, your body is telekinetically under someone else's control. Gotcha. Uh, roll soak. Does my armor do me a soak here? Yep, sure does. And your leather jacket. So my leather jacket's what, one? I and my armor's was... two? Three for the, like, flak jacket stuff Miles gave us a while ago. And one for the leather jacket? <laughs> okay. Yikes. Uh, I think it's just a single soak. He's only dealt one bashing to you, so you will soak all of it. <laughs> all right. Thank God. You're dragged under the car a few meters before it releases you, and he is still speeding off. Uh, next, we will go to Neil. It looks like he's getting away, right? Uh, it's looking like that, yeah. I forgot to ask earlier, what's the weather like right now? It's a pretty clear night. Clear night. Okay. Neil will look around and just say, somebody figure out how to stop him. Uh I'll keep eyes on him, and he covers one of his eyes, and I will throw my vision up to the heavens so I can just continue to watch the car from space. Yes, yeah, succeed. You watch him, and he is, uh, you can see that he is concealed in darkness. When? We don't know if Fester is in the car or not, do we? You do not. You don't get any of your vampire aura stuff. Do I get it? As You have to roll for it every time we're checking it. Okay. Um, I did roll once. Yep. Uh, that was three successes. Yep, which tracked you to the house. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to do it again. Yep. No, that's a botch. A botch. Yeah. You're not sure, but you think that trail's going with the car. <laughs> All right, so when will start chasing down the car? Miles. How far away is the car at this point? Approximately. Like 60 yards. That's a lot. Sports cars. Now, remind me, was the Honda on? It the was. Honda was parked. Right, it was parked. Was the it, music was on. Was it running? Oh, I'll let you roll a die. On a six, <laughs> six and up, it's running. A six. Woo. It is running. <laughs> I don't know if I could turn this into anything. I'm going to start booking it for the car, and I'm hoping that the driver looks at me, and then I will tell him to g- run. <laughs> they are looking at you. I don't know which one's in the drive. Actually... You can pick which one's in the driver's <laughs> seat. I will uh, spend a willpower, and hopefully it works, for majesty. Okay. And as I get there, give me the car. Okay. <laughs> on their action, yep. uh, they are going to proceed with the actions they were intending on taking against you. Yep. Driver's side door opens, uh-huh. and the two come piling out, opening fire on you. So the majesty has no effect? I don't know yet. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> their intention. I don't know. <laughs> they roll courage. So the first one rolls. Okay. Okay. A dog tosses you his gun and gets out of the way so that you can take the driver's side seat. C dog, who is in the passenger seat, just opens up on you with a Mac 10. All right. He is declaring full auto. He has three successes to hit you. Five bashing coming at you. Nine. You soak. <laughs> After he uh, attempts to damage me, I will use retaliatory terror. Go for it. Wits plus courage. Uh, his wits is a two. His courage is a three. He's stupid, but he's brave. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be five successes. I uh, will bail. 
<laughs> okay, Bretta, what are your celerity actions? Bretta has two celerity actions, and she will be committing both to trying to shoot out that same tire. Sounds good. She will move up, going for the back seat of the car, but she's more focused on shooting. Difficulty? Nine. With the willpower, that is three successes. Two roll over into damage. Six. Spec and sharpshooter count? Yes, it does. Then it is five successes. You hear an audible noise as the tire goes. The car swerves. He regains control of the vehicle and manages to not plow into, like, a fucking structure. I will commit my next action to trying to take out another tire. Okay. It's easier to hit if it's moving slower. <laughs> uh, no, it's moving super erratically. <laughs> <laughs> Four successes. Three roll over into damage. Five damage. With five successes, you take a second tire out. Britta methodically commits to trying to disable the vehicle. The car makes a horrible grinding noise, and while he seems to have control of it, it is slowing to a snail's pace. And it's at this point that he turns and smashes it into another hole. The next round starts with Vitel. Whatever it is that Vitel is doing in that house, he does not show himself, but something does happen. A globe of darkness fills the space and smothers the car. After that, we go to Britta. So I believe by this time that Britta would have been able to get into the car that Miles is driving. And I would like to hold until we are closer to the situation. Okay. After Britta holds her action, it goes to Johnny. Johnny stands up from having been run over, dusts himself off, glares at the car through a pair of broken sunglasses that he discards, looks down at his chainsaw, and fucking pulls the ripcord so it starts starts up. Are you taking any movement? He will take a few menacing steps towards the orb of darkness. Lex, considering I'm just moving and starting a chainsaw, can I, um, can I split that with some kind of held dodge or no? Yes, you can. Okay. Seeing Johnny approach, I would like to... Having seen that it's difficult to see through Alessandra's darkness before, I'm going to use this moment to try to test if I can track where Vitel would be within it with aura perception. With aura perception, all you see is ice cold. Does that take up my action? Yes, it does. You can see, Miles, that Britta strains to try to spot something within that orb, but she shakes her head, adjusting the gun to better hold it within her grasp. Then it is to kneel. Neil will uh, just start basically running down the street to try and catch up with everybody because I'm too far behind. Okay. When? How many actions will it take of me full out running to get to the car? I'll say three. Okay. So Wynn will spend blood for our celerity action and dedicate her primary action to running. Okay. So that will be two, uh, essentially. Two of the three. It'll be two thirds of the way yep. to the house on there. Uh, Miles, uh, the car you're in, uh, you start going. Uh, yes. Um, and within a short period of time, you're getting pretty close to the location. All right. I will, uh, when I get there, I will park the car in some sort of, like at an angle or something like that and try to put the lights on the house. Okay. The headlights. Trying to shine the headlights through into the darkness uh, or? Sure. I don't the know. The headlights shine on a wall of pitch black. Yeah. I know so little about the Sombras that <laughs> you you learn. Yep, we learn now <laughs> that when thing. you shine the headlights on on that it does not illuminate anything inside. It is just hitting this matte black wall of darkness. I do, I do appreciate the matte blackness of it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Before celerity actions start, a few things happen. One, Miles, mm -hmm. you begin to feel like the world is against you. And all of the confidence that you have felt in the past begins to wither and die. Until I say otherwise, what is your lowest virtue? Conscience. What is it at? Two. That is your maximum dice pull on any roll. Oh. <sighs> then, as the car is parked with the headlights focused on the house, 
there is this whiff of shadow in the back seat as Vitel steps from one shadow to another and strikes at Britta. He connects with 13 successes to hit. May I use my held celerity action to attempt to dodge? You may only dodge enemies you are aware of, and you are not aware of this until it is too late. Gotcha. You may roll soak. That is stamina? Yes. May I spend a willpower? You may not. We've got the armor that Miles gave us on, right? It's three extra dice. It's three dice for armor, and then how much for a leather jacket? One. I did recently buy up my stamina. We're at three stamina, three for the armor, and one for the jacket. Okay, give me... Is this a celerity Garrett, can you hold this tray, please? This yes. Sli- okay. Actually, uh... No, it's his black metamorphosis. Uh, celerity is coming after this. Understood. Okay, go ahead and roll soak. D10s explode. If you have a stamina specialty. I do not, so that is three successes. You will take a total of 10 levels of lethal damage. All right, what does that bring me to? He is sending you to torpor. Through the back seat and through your torso emerges a thick black tentacle that comes to a razor sharp bladed point. As this tentacle strikes through Britta, it strikes true. And you see something you've never seen before. N- not in Britta, you've seen it in other kindred. The way that her skin starts to mummify, that the life goes out of her eyes, and she falls directly and immediately into torpor. Despite the animation in her, despite the blood running through her veins at the speed of celerity, she could not dodge, she could not anticipate, she just immediately goes fully unconscious. Uh, Lex, follow-up question. So with the black metamorphosis action, was that to, to step through shadow, or was that to, to puncture her? It does not take him an action to step through shadow. Okay. It is just part of his movement. Perfect. Miles. Uh, oh, I should actually clarify. Miles, this does not affect your soak pools. Okay. Well, that's good. I was a bit worried. <laughs> yeah, I, you're a understandably. Lot <laughs> I was like, well, that's a, that's a hell of a hit. Miles, to strike you, he'll expend a point of willpower. Nine successes to hit. Fifteen lethal. I reduce it by four. Uh, you will suffer 11 levels of lethal damage. Uh, so four of that is going to roll into ag. Yep. And you are reduced to torpor, but do not die from this strike. At the end of his celerity action, he stands up in the car, causing the roof of the vehicle, the glass, the, the metal to bend and warp out of his way. What emerges from the roof of the vehicle is a creature that seems to only half exist. It flickers in and out of any visual recognition at all. But when it is there, it is obscured and whirling living shadows and has six foot tentacles that seem to have erupted from its torso and rend the car around it as though it were made of paper. Everyone who has never seen a black metamorphosis has to roll courage at difficulty eight. If you fail this roll, you are entering Rotrek and fleeing the scene. Did Johnny and I see it at the Dunkin' Donuts in season two? No. Okay. Uh, Johnny did give everyone Ironheart. Uh, this is not a supernatural source of fear, quote unquote. It's not like leveraging emotional advantage over you. It is... It is genuinely that terrifying that your own beast is attempting to flee the situation. Doesn't Ironheart still give you bonuses to this? It, it, only to presence, dominate, mind affecting Thom. Did Neil? I, I recognize it is a weird spot in the system. Was I that? have actually sort of seen it before because Carmen was coming at me at the gala. Carmen came at you at the gala. That was Black Metamorphosis. Then I do, not, do not have, have to roll, roll. Thank fucking God. <laughs> um, can I spend a willpower on this? Yes, you may. <laughs> uh, do tens explode? Uh, they do not, but I can see that they don't need to, uh, based on what I'm saying on your dice. Win, how you doing over there? Running away. Uh, d- what about your one willpower that you spent? Oh no, wait a minute, I fucked that up. None of these I dice heard, succeeded, so I got one success. I heard you declare your willpower. That is succeeding. Yep. The Perfect. willpower use was <laughs> correct. Five successes. Johnny, you don't feel afraid of this thing, you feel angry. Win got the one. 
By your will, you're there. Yep. <laughs> Win holds on. Mm-hmm. It is Johnny's turn. Johnny whips around to see this creature standing like Chernabog above the car. <laughs> and he is going to take a leap using his bruja filled power to engage it in combat. Lex, with my normal action, because I am spending blood to take all five of my celerity, Oof. which actually will put my initiative down, right? Uh, yes, it does, but so, I think we're still ballparking around the same because okay. of the torpors. Um, with my normal, considering I am taking a leap and bound at Vitel, I, can, I, I could conceivably split that with an attack with the chainsaw, correct? That, yes. That movement plus a chainsaw attack. Yes. Okay. So let's do that. So that would split my dice pool in half? Yes, and your difficulty is 12. 12. Plus two difficulty for a chainsaw, plus two difficulty for the use of Vanish from the Mind's Eye, and plus two difficulty because it is in black metamorphosis. So what does that mean in terms of dice? You are rolling a difficulty 10, and we are going to ignore your first two successes. Okay. Woof. Woof. Jane's chainsaw's increased difficulty does not give any bonus dice to attack with it, though, right? It's just... Right. Right. They're harder to hit with, but are explosive in terms of damage. Right. All right, so my dice pool is normally 10. Um, My dex is juiced up, and I have a 4 for my chainsaw. All celerity is going towards extra actions, Um, so I'm rolling 5 dice, and I will spend a willpower for an automatic success. Understood. We ignore my first two. Yes. So that ten is ignored. A single success to hit. You fucking hit, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> I will expend a further blood for my potence. Um, before you do, uh, he will sacrifice his celerity action and dodge. Three successes to dodge. He says to you, Oh, Johnny, I think you're about to be prince. His grace seems indisposed along with his adopted child. Who do I kill next? And then it is Wynn's turn. So Wynn is going to run again. Can I see into the car? And can I hear what Marcus just said? Yes and yes. I don't feel like I can get away with not making a frenzy check. Go for it. I will spend a willpower because the urge to murder is pretty strong. I think Johnny probably should also make a frenzy check here now that you bring that up. Yep. See, now that he is closer and sees what's happened to both Miles and Britta. Uh, Johnny, he says to you, pick which one I kill. Two successes to not frenzy. Johnny, how you doing? Johnny botches. (laughs) And with a roar, rips the chainsaw in half. Gasoline spills everywhere, (laughs) and his fists start smoking. Johnny, as you lose it, you see Britta for the first time in torpor, and you cannot visualize any difference between her and your daughter. And when he asks you to pick which one dies, you lose it. You're gone. So Wynn will take a minute, a pause, a beat, more than anything. Take a strangely necessary breath to focus. Her awful claws will extend, and she charges. Okay. Uh, It will take you this celerity action to reach him, Mm -hmm. but that is uh, your turn. Mm -hmm. Next, it goes to Vitel. He reaches down, grabs your prince by the collar, and pulls him into the back seat. And the two of them cross through that shadow and disappear somewhere else. And then he will kneel. Yes. Um, He will take an action against you. Okay. From his globe of darkness. Of course he will. Your eyeballs are swallowed by flapping flits of, like, moving physical darkness. You gain the blind flaw. Okay. Uh, That is his turn. Great. And I have no idea where he went, huh? Roll me a perception. I'm frenzying. Yeah, I know. Can I, can I make a perception check test like that? 
Yeah, you just can't use mental disciplines and stuff. But you can, like, sniff the air, look around, be feral, and be like, he's that way, and just, like, go fucking running at him. Uh, this difficulty is eight. No successes. Okay. Um, so Johnny's first uh, celerity action will be spent reaching into that pit of darkness that he went went into and just basically tearing the part, the, the car. I need you to roll a die. A seven. Okay. You do not roll damage on Brita this turn. May I make another perception test for my second celerity action? No, Vital's going to take a celerity action. Okay. He moves deeper into the home. Your action. I'm oh, sorry, deeper into the wh- into where? The house. The home. The house. That's- that he crashed into. Is that, the, is that where in the, the one that he crashed into? Or? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, you're going to roll perception plus alertness, but it's against his dex plus stealth. Uh, you are at difficulty eight. I'll spend a willpower. Four successes. Yeah, actually, you have an idea as to where in the house he's moved to. <laughs> Goddamn. All right, damn. All right. <laughs> I did not expect that at all. Um, <laughs> Very so nice. seeing a flash of movement in the house, Johnny's head whips up, and he will spend this action to leap at Vitel in the house. Okay. So that's my celerity two. Okay. On celerity three, Vitel turns and grabs at you. He grabs you with four successes. I think he's got me. It goes to your turn. I will attempt with my celerity three. I will attempt to break the grapple. Okay. Uh, you are rolling a difficulty eight for this. His obvious K4 does not help him, but his the black metamorphosis makes him very good at grappling. By the way, while he's in contact with you, you will take a penalty to your stamina. It is reduced by one. Okay. As uh, the a chilling effect seeps into your flesh. He has 14 successes. I have 11 successes to break. Okay. He holds on. He will hold his remaining celerity action to seize control of you should you break free of him. In order to take any other actions against him, I have to, I have to break, right? Yes, you do. Celerity 4 will be used to break this grapple with Vitel. Nine successes. He has 15 again. With his remaining celerity action that he was holding, uh, he is going to perform a clinch maneuver. Uh, How's that work? Uh, Actually, no. He's going to bite you. He has 13 successes to hit. Jesus Christ. Yes, he does. Yeah, it was four tens. He will take three traits of blood from you. You have one more celerity action remaining. Let's try and break the grapple. Okay. Johnny has... 13 successes, and he is going to attempt to reverse the grapple onto Vitel. Ooh, okay, so Marcus Vitel has 12 successes, <laughs> causing you to reverse the grapple that's on him. <laughs> With that said, that's the end of that round. We go on to the next one. His initial action is very clear. He's going to attempt... Yeah, he's going to attempt to reverse the grapple and retain control, retain control of you. Uh, he really wants this, so he's going to spend a point of willpower. Uh, Johnny will match him on the willpower. So Johnny did not roll the best. He only got a single success, but with his potence of eight, he will have nine successes altogether. He will roll 20 successes Jesus Christ. to reverse the grapple. And while hoisting you up in the air, he grips Johnny by the neck and this creature that is there, not there, this living embodiment of monstrous shadows whispers as if conveying his thoughts to the Johnny that is currently in the back seat of his own body. And he says, it is such a shame that she wants you. I'm not allowed to kill you, Johnny, but the rest of your coterie is fair game. Win. With no ceremony, with no witty one-liner, uh, Wynn attempts to grapple Marcus. You still have to spend one getting here. So on Celerity, you'll be able to attempt mm-hmm. to grab him. But this one, yeah, you make a full run, mm-hmm. and you will arrive just in time to hear what Marcus Vitel was whispering to Johnny. So on my normal, I can try and reverse it one more time. Let's fucking take this shit back. Mm-mm. Do it up. He will spend a point of blood to modify his potence. 
10 successes. And then plus five automatic success. So that's 19 successes. Total. How did you not roll any ones? I it, just set it down for everyone to look at. I rolled fucking like, wild. I rolled three ones. You have the most swingy luck for mm -hmm. a player I've ever witnessed in the entire of my life. I, <laughs> no, I just have the most consistent spread of dice. If I, if I roll, like, <laughs> I'm going to roll once. You give me a pile of fucking... Ah. All right. All right. All right. Though... Johnny is technically the stronger kindred in this moment. Vitel demonstrates millennia of martial training and leverages Johnny to the ground. Neil. Uh, I am currently blind. Actually, uh, uh, as you move forward a bit more on the start of your turn, the shadows are left behind. So they were still there obscuring your vision uh, for that moment. But as you move, you kind of realize you can actually they stayed in place. Right. I was actually going to ask whether my eye in the sky fucking mattered. They're like tethered to your eyes. But because your eyes were incorporeal, they couldn't hold on. They just. Oh, I see. OK. They're like grappling your eyeballs. Gotcha. <laughs> That's cool. The worst. Um, the, the worst. Put no, shadow parasites are the like worst. We'll get there. <laughs> What's your turn? So Neil's running. It's going to take him way too long to get anywhere. But is there, but there's no fire yet. Yeah, Alex, you said I could see them through the window? Or like through the hole in the fucking house? Yes, you can see the two of them wrestling back and forth. Johnny is struggling against this person, but so far, he's he's doing it. He's he's keeping up. Weird contextual question. They smash through the wall. Are there like fucking water pipes and shit going off? Like yes, what there's okay. water everywhere. Great. So, Neil, as he's running, the hand that's not holding the mirror is going to reach out and point towards that water, and then I'm going to try and twist it into chains to latch on to this fucking Marcus Vital thing, and if I can't pull him off, Johnny, then at least hold him down. Go ahead and give me a roll. So, because this is fresh water, I'm at diff four for this roll, I will spend a willpower. Okay. With a willpower that is eight successes on that roll. Nice. Okay. To break out, he has to get eight uh, over eight successes on a strength roll. Uh, Potent's going to add, but he's rolling a difficulty eight. Okay. So the water coalesces into like literal chains and just lashes out of all these like broken flowing pipes and the pools of water on the ground and just wraps around his neck and his arms and just holds him in place. Uh, and Neil's just panting like, oh, I'm coming. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm coming. With nine successes, Son of a bitch. Johnny is grappled from behind. Wait, what? And holding on to him for the briefest moment, Renwick utilizes his mastery of the beast <gasps> to attempt to calm <gasps> yeah! Johnny. Oh my god, I've never been so happy to not see someone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. You don't work with the Sabbat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. With seven successes, he holds on to the Bruja and calms him. Johnny, you have your wits about you again, and things are not looking great. You're currently being held by Renwick and Marcus Vitel, who is also being held by these strings of water that are all around him and holding on to him like like the like threads of spider webbing. Okay. I believe we go to celerity. Sounds about right. <laughs> Black Metamorphosis tentacles will attempt to rip free from the chains of water. He casually tears free, um, but that is his first action. Uh, while holding Johnny grappled, Johnny, he will feed three from you. I will take three lethal. Uh, it is ag. Oh, I'll it take is, three ag It is instead. actually a specifically unsoakable ag because this is the process of Diablery. Renwick will initiate a grapple against Marcus Vital. With only his willpower, he is able to hold on. Win. Win's gonna attempt to murder the dick off of Marcus Vital. <laughs> you may make your attack roll. It is at difficulty nine for you. Is that because I can see in the darkness a little better? <laughs> it is. Two, and then the willpower is three. So you're hit with three successes. I'm going to be spending a blood for my new fun levels of potence just to add directly to damage. Nine levels of ag coming at him. He will suffer one level of aggravated damage. 
-hmm. as you wound Marcus Vitel. Marcus Vitel does not frenzy on you. First time he's taken damage in mm -hmm. some years, huh? It's been a while, yeah. Uh, and on Celerity 2, Marcus Vitel will reverse the grapple on Renwick. Vitel has nine successes. Nine successes. Uh, okay. So they maintain status quo? They so push Renwick and they... Can maintain his grapple. Yes. All right. Woo! Oh, that round for Renwick. You feed. Who's feeding? Renwick. Uh, Renwick is feeding on Vitel. Oh, all right. Uh, which, by him. the way, uh, his, portions of his jaw splay open and a horrific feeding tongue seeps out from the back of his throat and starts to suck from Vitel. Celerity three. Vitel gets 17 successes to reverse the grapple. It is reversed. Oh shit. 13 successes from Renwick trying to reverse. <laughs> That is uh, Renwick's last action for the round. He does not reverse the grapple that Marcus Vitel has on him. On Celerity 4, Marcus Vitel takes his final action for the round. He has eight successes to bite him, seven carry over. He is biting for damage. On who? Renwick. Okay. He bites for 11 levels of aggravated damage. Renwick soaks four... Uh, let's health chart. That's in cap. He goes to in cap with aggravated damage and Holy survives the attack. Shit. <laughs> That's kind of not what I expected. <laughs> Badass, buddy. That's the round. Yes. <sighs> At the start of round four, wrestling these two cr proud kindred, Vital casts his gaze towards Win, Win, I need you to make a dexterity plus a cult roll. I'm going to spend a willpower on this. I must warn you, now that you are in the house, there is a net plus one difficulty to this roll. You will be rolling a difficulty eight. Okay. Three successes. He has no successes on his roll. <gasps> oh, really? <yes. laughs> <sighs> All right. So what the fuck happens? What does this look like? Nothing happens. Nothing. Jesus. <laughs> that is that is the best outcome. Yep. 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 I don't know what he's doing, but that bad. I roll it. I left the dice there. I, there, are, there are a pile <laughs> of ones. They finally caught up to Lex. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they would eventually. They always do. <laughs> Okay. Fucking good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wasn't by a lot, but it was by enough. <laughs> but that takes his turn. Johnny, we go to you. It should be noted that Renwick is making the decision to spend the point of willpower and ignore wound penalties for the round mm -hmm. and remains on his feet. Oh, boy. Jesus, buddy. Johnny is going to uh, hold his action. Question for narrative reasons. Are Johnny's hands still hot and smoking? There is steam coming off of his hands, but it does not appear that they are glowing hot or anything like that. Not like we have seen Weather's hands. Mm. Okay. Running out of options, her coterie in shambles around her, allies falling left and right. Wynne winds up her hand and punches through the roof of the car, soaking her hand in volatile liquids. Takes a lighter from her pocket and lights up her claws. Neither of them are dice rolls, but I would be having you split your dice pool in order to do that. But okay. this is you. Uh, give me a courage roll to see if you're willing to set your hand ablaze. Three. Okay. You are willing to do that. Give me a soak roll. This is aggravated damage. And so that's just fortitude? Yes. Okay. Three successes. Okay. You do not take any damage as the oil on your hand burns. And she has her eyes fixed on Marcus Vitel. Eyes glowing red, hair probably a mess, but shimmering in the light of the fire from her hand. Neil. 
Neil will continue to run forwards, a uh, little trying to get closer to everybody uh, towards the car wreck. Sees the fire and is just going to once again uh, throw an arm out and try and bind Marcus Vital in place. Roll it. I'm spending another willpower for this. With a willpower, I have eight successes. Okay. Good fucking roll. Mm -hmm. Diff four is rad. Once again, that like web of water just whips out and entangles Marcus Vital, pulling at him. uh, So he needs to get eight successes on a diff eight strength roll to get out. And Neil just continues to run and like mutter under his breath, like, I'm I'm coming. Hold on. I'll, I'll be there soon. Renwick attempts to escape. Good. Okay. Uh, no, Renwick fails to escape. <laughs> that becomes the end of normal actions. Johnny still has an action as well that he's held. So he's going to try to escape as well. I have 10 successes. Eat. <laughs> oh. 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 Johnny tears free. That's all he's got currently. At the top of round four celerity, black metamorphosis tentacles attempt to tear down these shackles of water. He has seven successes. (sighs) Thank God. I think Wynn is up next. Oh boy. Wynn, no pressure. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> it's time for the Wimberly. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> Wimberly with the flaming claws. Um, because I'm on fire, is there either a dice bonus or... Not to the attack roll. Okay. Just, I gotta check and see if you can dodge. Yeah, it just says you're trapped. Okay, yeah, so. it's not an actual grapple, though, so okay. he can dodge. Yep. Difficulty. Nine. One success. He dodges. He avoids the attack. This thing is incredibly difficult to keep track of. Mm -hmm. And it kind of flickers in and out. And even with your abilities to see in the dark because of the red glow in your eyes, he's just too elusive. Vital attempts to break free of the shackles again. Held. That is two more actions to go. <sighs> Held. Oh, God. It's okay. I'm so fucking stressed. <laughs> Dude. I think you can see. We, we are all <laughs> like buttholes clenched. Mm-hmm. Like just right up to the sternum. Honestly, I just final like- action for the round. Held. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Next round. Holy shit. This is... At the start of the round. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> he spends a point of willpower. He starts to cackle. And from the recesses of the room and the shroud of night, tentacles begin to move in the dark eight of them in all all of them with strength dexterity and stamina equal to his obtenebration rating start to move and reach toward their intended victims you may well have a chance but it will not save your prince it seems clear that some of these tentacles are emerging from prince davenport's shadows Do we know that by the shape of them or just the implication that they would be near him? They're literally, like, he's lying on the ground, and some of them are coming out from under him. Where is Miles? Because I don't think we've seen him up until He's next to Vital on the ground. He had been taken when he shadow-stepped. Johnny. Seeing the tentacles uh, spring up, Johnny recognizes a very bad moment. Having... Tangled with the Sabbat and up tenebration and being outnumbered by these things before. This is the time when you get the fuck out. He reaches down and scoops up Miles and puts his other arm around Renwick. And using every ounce of, of 
the strength he has left launches himself out of this porch in a leap and bound. Roll me strength plus athletics against his brawl. I will be spending a willpower to do so. Six successes. Marcus Vitel has 13 successes. You leap away, but Renwick stays. When what's your dex? Currently a five. Okay. Uh, the tentacles are actually faster than you, uh, but Neil is actually on a 15. Uh, so technically, Neil, you do go before the tentacles. Neil is running, still like running towards the car where he thinks, you know, like Britta went down. So I see Johnny leap out. Neil runs to the car, sees Britta on the ground in torpor. Lex, is she under any? Is she like pinned under stuff? Or can I just like grab her? You can just slide her up. Okay. He only hesitates for a second and then throws the mirror shard that he's been holding onto the ground and it breaks. And then he reaches down and physically grabs Britta and pulls her out of the car. Only strong enough now to do it because of the potence given to him by Johnny. And is going to attempt to, like, vanish and just get her the fuck out of here. Roll it. Uh, because I had a split for picking her up and going, uh, I will spend a willpower on the vanish roll. Understood. Does my lurking spec count? It sure does. <laughs> All right. What's his wits alertness? Total is 11. So I need 10s. I had... Oh, around. I had two 10s. So I ignore the first success. So uh, that is... Five successes minus the one for uh, the thing. So I do not have that many. I do still have four successes, though. Okay. Not enough probably to make him forget that I was here. But as far as Neil is aware for now, uh, he will pick up Britta and just disappear. Tentacles. I need someone to do me the quick favor of rolling... What becomes eight dice of soak for uh, Renwick? Roll eight dice. Yes, please. Okay. And then be ready to do that a few times for me. Mm-hmm. He has two successes. Two of the tentacles grab hold of Renwick. One pops his head from the body, and his body falls slump, beginning to wither away. Damn it. That is, the tentacles have no more viable targets. So that's them when... Actually, no, when you're there. Tentacle two. I will attempt to grapple you. Okay. First attack has three successes against you. Five successes. You avoid the first tentacle. Second tentacle. Second tentacle has seven successes to grab you. When spends a blood for shattered fog and becomes missed. Okay. Uh, when you are missed. You staying moving? What are you doing? Where Johnny's out, right? Johnny's out. Renwick's dead. Renwick's dead. Miles is with Johnny, and Britta is with Neil. Wynn aims for an exit. Okay, so you start misting out. Yep. Okay. Is it possible to get out, out of range of the tentacles, but still within range of the destroyed car? No. Okay. Then she will just boogie. I'll take five attempts to break free of the water shackles. Seven successes. Not enough. Next attempt. No. The celerity two. Celerity three. Nope. He does not escape. Top of the round. It's him again. Win. Roll me dex plus a cult. Your difficulty is seven. Five successes. Five successes. Uh, six. Beats is four. <laughs> oh. That's him, Johnny. Are you continuing to beat feet or what? Yeah, Johnny. Johnny's gonna flee. Uh, flee to the uh, to the car. Uh, Johnny, at this point, you and anyone you are carrying have exited combat. Neil. As far as I know, I'm in obfuscate and I've got Britta, so I'm I just gotta run. I don't have fancy super speeds or anything. Um, Are you leaving the fight? Yes. Yeah. It is my intention to um, get the fuck out of here and start like stealthing my way out of here as best I can. Okay. You may do so. It's time to go. I gotta get I gotta get out of here. I gotta get them out of here. Win. What you doing? Staying between Neil and the horrible house. 
to ensure that if something is coming through, I'm there. But it's kind of a pointless thing to do because I'm missed and can't really do actions against people. So you returned to your normal form at ah. the end of the round that you used missed form. So you are you. He's also vanished. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you know where I am. Yeah, you have lost track of uh, everyone else at this point. Well, I suspect I saw Johnny Scarper. Yes. Wynne will trust that her people are out and she will exit. To find exit. Leave the scene. Leave the fight. How are you doing it? I don't think we've ever actually seen Wynne in mist form. So this cloud of red coalesces into Wynne looking angry and pissed, and she turns and runs. Before the round is over, Vital breaks free. <music> Top of the round, win. Mm -hmm. He's spending for more celerity you have, your means of escape, is not actually fast enough to escape this vampire. When you start to feel your emotions getting twisted and knotted and fucked with bad, and every bad sensation you've had for the past year, losing people, rejection, being condescended, everything comes rushing back to you. But because of the iron heart that was instilled upon you, you do not submit to the spark of rage that he attempts to ignite in you. Oh. You do not enter frenzy. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> he seems content to watch you and hit you with it over and over and over until you inevitably break. So, I need to know what you will do to get out of his line of sight. Am I hemmed in at this point? And literally, by the way, that was like because of the plus one difficulty. Mm -hmm. God damn. Mm -hmm. What kind of nature settings do we have here? Is this just like lawns or is there... Lawns. Okay. How close is the nearest house? You can probably get to it with the full run. All right. Um, Wind still has the benefit of Potence 4, right? Sure does. Would that help me jump further to get a head start? Yes. You would be making a strength athletics rule at difficulty four. Three yards per success. Which arguably is further than the like, six steps around. Yeah, you've seen Johnny Hulk jump. Yeah. Strength, athletics. Plus four dice of potence. All right. Do I add those in or do they just count as four successes? Are you spending a point of blood? I will. Then it's four successes. Okay. The best roll I've had all night, by the way. <laughs> Nine successes. Plus four, so 13 successes. God damn, dude. <laughs> You're in the house. Yeah. Crash into the window. You have now broken his line of sight. She will not stop. She will just keep running and jump out the other window and keep running. You see behind you where he's coming from. And the room you leap into, just as you're going into the next room and starting to make your escape, was engulfed in flames. And as you're leaving out of the house, you see him simply go outside and gestures to different homes and begins to burn the neighborhood down hunting you. Do you stay or go? I'll go. Path of Night is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft, the Toreador, was played by Rebecca Segelfest. Johnny Saxon, the Bruja, was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport, the Venture, was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster, the Malkavian, was played by Rob Meerhead. Wynn Cabot, the Gangrel, was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Segelfest. This episode edited by Rob Meerhead. The music used in this episode was composed for Path of Night by Brian Metolius. Find him online at brianmetolius.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness are owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We can be found on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Path of Night. You can help support the show on coffee.com slash Path of Night. Find us on twitter.com slash Path of Night Pod, on facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcasts, or email us at Path of Night Podcasts at gmail.com. 
See you next time, Kindred. You'll talk, guys. Mm. You're on 15. I don't think we have a chance of taking Vitel down here. I do think we have a chance of escaping now. But I'm willing to fucking double down if you guys are. But I'm thinking the best, our, our best bet of getting out of this, because I, I think it's a long shot to take Vitel down. I don't think I can do it in a single round, and the second those tentacles get to act, we're fucked. Because I need to tank, and then I need to do stuff. So I, I am I am at least I'm probably two rounds away from being able to do anything, and that's going to require a lot of lucky rolls. Now, I think I can probably grab Miles and Renwick, and I can jump the fuck out of here. It may be a strength check to hold on to Renwick, because I think Vitel still has him. But I think I could jump the hell out of here. When I think you can get out of here as well, right? I have celerity one. They don't need to go far. So, because um, he's got no celerity at this point. Wynn's also completely uninjured and very willing to buy time. Britta is in a car away from the house, um, torpored. Neil, you're near her, and you could probably maybe get her the hell out. I'm going to be soon. So, y'all, are we fighting or are we running? Or Lex... Do you want to make us fucking choose with a werewolf style <laughs> pole? Erica, if you get the fuck out of there, I can wall him off. I mean, he can fucking teleport. All right, let's pause on table talk for a moment. I know sometimes we need it to loosen the stress and have a cohesive story. Yeah. But now. All of you have a means of texting me or sending me a chat message. Uh, one word, stay or go. I don't think we get loans. Uh, no. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Is this our, let me ask you a clarifying question if I can. Is this our general vibe of what we want to do, or is this, like, prescriptive to our actions? Example, what I mean by that is, like, if I choose one thing and then I see everyone else is not doing that thing, probably going to change my mind since I'm out in the street. You know what I mean? I can tell you what my vibe is. <sighs> What, give me your uh, intended uh, course of action. Uh, again, just the one word. And if everyone's is the same, I think we can actually pretty much go to narration. If it's different, I want to resolve those intended actions from people who have different actions intended. I've sent you a message. I gotta respond like that. <laughs> yeah, that was awful. He said noted to me. He you. said noted to me. <laughs> what a fucking frick. What a dick. God <laughs> damn it. I fucking hate Way that. Way to change the fucking mood of the table. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have four out of the three people I needed, just one more and we're good to go. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that is the correct math. I don't know what to tell you. I require more than one word to explain what I want. It, oh, I said more than one word, too. Oh, he said <laughs> Gary didn't follow the fucking rules. So that's, why, that's why you got to note it. I had already... <laughs> <laughs> that's bullshit I sent the word go and that's why you gotta note it <laughs> next question <laughs> I also wanted to explain it's good but to know no. that both me good and no. Rebecca also responded to no it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> alright well while Eric is writing the word go for the next 12 minutes I'm gonna go pee I'm done well shit then go pee pee here. right here no We'll make eye contact, and I can. 
I, I probably could. I really do have to pee. Right <laughs> Let's go. Lex has got to think. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Thanks, Rob. I guess we'll just be here. So- go pee, Jesus Christ. <laughs> no one I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I also got it noted. I way. got it all capital <laughs> noted. <I don't> know. <laughs> what about you, Rebecca? I got noted okay. for my uh, important contribution here. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> mine was uh, this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you Lex telling me that he's not Ed. <laughs> it's just my bunny. <laughs> Make things weird if you were, but... <laughs> Wow, I did not expect Marcus Vitello to just fucking fail a set of rolls. Mm, neither did we, Lex. <laughs> and for the record, like that was not me. Like, <laughs> like, oh, no, let me go easy on you, know, you guys. You know what it was? I I was showing you know those rolls. <clears throat> and this is this is fucking dice superstition, like at its peak. He was on a fucking hot streak, and we were like, let's cool off. <laughs> We came back to the table and suddenly, where, where was it? I know. You're on a hot streak. You're on a hot streak. You fucking stay on that shit. That and we also waited all your dice while you were upstairs. Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously I did. Him, uh, that, but also we cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I also auditioned my dice. So I only had ones there that were in it to win it. The evens were all uh, <laughs> painted so they were heavy down. So no tens. No tens. <laughs> so in Johnny's action... Okay, 